Hey hockey fans, welcome to Goal Line Hockey. And today we're going to continue the Season Outlook series. Make sure to check out the other videos we have as we're starting to take a wrap up of some of the lower teams in the NHL and give an overview of what the future holds for these hockey teams. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more of what's going on here at Goal Line Hockey. So to start things off, Things did not start well for the Detroit Red Wings. A very frustrating start to the season for the Red Wings. Say they would start the season 0 5 and 2. 0 5 and 2. So that means zero wins, five losses, and two overtime losses, which basically it's a point that you got two points in seven games. So you got two points of a possible 14. That is. That is utterly embarrassing, and yeah, if Red Wings fans knew that they were going to be in for a tough year, but I, I don't think they were expecting it right off the bat like it they did. Taking a look at the points leaders for the Red Wings, started off with the Michigan kid, Dylan Larkin, 62 points in 65 games. Andreas Athanasiu, 39 points in 60 games played. Anthony Mantha, 32 points in 51 games. Tyler Bertuzzi with 32 points in 57 games. And Franz Nielsen, the former Islander, 32 points in 61 games played. So the depressing thing here is just the drop-off from Dylan Larkin. And, and Dylan Larkin, 62 points in 65 games. He's having a good year, but he may not be the star rookie sensation that he was a couple of years back. And that's no discredit to Dylan Larkin. I obviously have his jersey right here. And I'm hoping that he sticks around in Detroit. But, oh man, you just look. 62 points for Dylan Larkin. And then second on that list is Andres Athanasiu, who, for better or for worse, is probably a third-line guy at this point. I really... I don't see him as a second line center in the NHL and he's proving it this year. He's maybe, I mean, he'll get maybe 50 points. That's really good. But again, another guy in his rookie season, a lot of hype around this, around this guy. And it just, some guys failing to meet expectations. Anthony Mantha, he's been injured. He's only played 51 games, but it's again he's another guy that you just you would hope for more from these guys and the scary thing is i feel like the red wings would be afraid to trade these guys like athanasiu and mantha because they would probably find some real success elsewhere i remember there were rumors not too long ago that the pittsburgh penguins were really looking to bring in a guy like anthony mantha for the wing and how oh man how deadly that would be for the penguins i really hope I'm very happy that didn't happen, and it, it could happen in the future, but just, I mean, again, nothing against Franz Nielsen. He's a great hockey player. I remember when he was with the Islanders, a great two-way player, really good shootout guy as well, one of the best in the NHL right now, but you can't you can't rely on that. He, yeah, he's one of the best shootout guys, but how many shootouts do you really get into, and if he misses, it, it's really not that valuable, but it's just, I, I would have expected more from the Detroit Red Wings, but it, it is what it is, right? And the far, I mean, they're in a kind of a situation like the Florida Panthers, just probably worse. They really don't have a lot of cap room. Ken Holland, the GM, yeah, he led that team in the 90s and the early 2000s, but you're starting to see some, maybe some loyalty issues due to his, you know, support for a lot of these guys. He has a ton of loyalty to these guys, but he gives out some massive contracts. And I just think of the Justin Ablocator. He's making five and a half, six, I think, over the next five or six years. And he's not even in the top five here. And he's one of the higher paid guys. This is, it's just not, a, it's not acceptable. Darren Helm just got a big extension. And Jonathan Erickson, you just look at some of these guys and you really were hoping that the Red Wings would just kind of, they'd almost be better off just letting some of these guys go to free agency and sign those big money contracts elsewhere and just let this team reset. And that's something that 
nothing against Ken Holland. He's doing his job. He's trying to keep these guys around. And he might have been let go if he didn't keep these guys and just let them all walk to free agency. So it's easy to sit here and say that the Red Wings aren't at their best and they give a lot of money out to these guys. But Ken Holland, for lack of a better term, he's just he hasn't completely evolved to the cutthroat, you know, trying to bring down salaries. And it might bite him in the end. And with Steve Eiserman being let go from the Tampa Bay Lightning, or I, I believe he relieved himself of the duties, who knows. But he would likely be the guy that comes into Detroit in the future and the guy that the Red Wings have always wanted. And I don't know how far away we truly are from that. I think ownership really likes Ken Holland. And I remember not too long ago there was some questions over the past couple of years about Ken Holland's future and his being protected. Obviously, we've seen press conferences where protection and safety could be flown out the window overnight and the next day you're fired. But those are different organizations. The Red Wings have a really great deep-rooted history and they have a lot of values in that locker room. And the team isn't finding success, but you do look at guys like Franz Nielsen, Darren Helm. They are great leaders for a young hockey team. And going through struggles like this, those guys are what keeps the team going. And maybe you're not winning as much, but as long as the locker room stays stays clean and everybody's good to go and is professional, there really aren't too many issues for the Red Wings moving forward. And just looking at the Red Wings record, 23, 33, and 10. That's going to add up for 56 points in the NHL. That is That is absolutely atrocious and not good enough at all seventh in the Atlantic division 30th in the NHL so they're second to last right now right behind the Ottawa Senators or right in front of the Ottawa Senators so that's not saying much for the Red Wings and I mean not everything is doom and gloom but things do not look great right now in Detroit until you look at the prospects Taking a look at some guys in the pipeline for the Detroit Red Wings. Not all hope is lost. Not all doom and gloom. As Philip Hironik, Dennis Chalowski, Joe Villano, that guy they got in, I believe, the late first round, maybe early second round. Jared McIsaac and Gustav Lindstrom. And obviously we remember the rumored, you know, who won the draft last season. The Islanders had a pretty good draft, selecting two in a row in the top 15. I believe it was 13, 15, 14, 15, something like that. And they got some pretty good players in Noah Dobson and Oliver Wallstrom, guys that fell. And Joe Valeno possibly being the steal of the second round. We've seen guys like that go in the past. Obviously, guys like Philip Zidina getting their chance this year. Playing most of the season in the minors, I don't. People have already called them a bust. I think that's complete, complete loony. That's ridiculous. He is in his first NHL season, his first season as a pro. That's a lot to put on a young kid, and I really like what the Red Wings are starting to build for the future. It's just keeping that salary cap down for the Red Wings, and they're really trapped in this for a couple of years. And this is something that. Whoever goes in there, if Ken Holland leaves or gets fired, they're going to have a lot of work ahead of them in Detroit. Thank you for watching the video, watching us here at Goal Line Hockey. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, hit the subscribe button for more coming in the near future. As we continue the Season Outlook series, make sure to check the playlist as we already have a couple going. and Heading from the bottom, rock bottom of the NHL, all the way to the top. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.